All right, back here kicking it with the homie. Last video got the turbo and accessories all set up. Now I'm actually working on starting to make the hot side. So I got one of the pieces done. This is for the driver's side turbo. This one I think turned out pretty well. I figured out how to get pretty much a nice straight shot right to the turbo. It's all purged so the inside looks nice like the outside. All the material that I'm using is from Ace Race Parts. Uh, first time I've ever used them, I usually just get the stuff from Stainless Bros on eBay, but this stuff is actually pretty nice. It comes all individually wrapped with caps on them. Very nicely packaged. The piping even came packaged with foam all the way around it, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, nice quality stuff. Ace Race Parts. A couple things I started with was flipping the manifolds. Uh, so you can see that it's cut and actually flipped there. I can insert some pictures, but it was actually pointed down. So the old setup on here had the, the flange facing down, the V-band facing down. So this one here, I also cut and then flipped it so it's coming up towards the turbo. Because before they were coming down and then it had a big U-shape. So this is the old pipe here coming down into a U-shape. This was coming off the manifold down to the wastegate and that's why they ended up smashing them off the ground because they came down so far. So I'm going to get that bolted on and we'll check it out. I should be able to just come off the bottom side of it with the wastegate. So let's check that out. All right, so the driver's side turbo did end up a little bit lower than where I had it mocked up. So I'll just adjust this thing. And all I got to do is spin these nuts a little bit. I set it up with a top and bottom nut on it. So I can kind of lock it into place. I'll mock that up and see. There you go, a little bit lower on this side. Uh, I did also take these tabs I was talking about before and I bolted it in. So now this bar is pretty much locked into position. Just kind of helps so the placement doesn't move around. So now what I can do is measure the inlet of the compressor housing, like the height off the ground. So that's like 30 and 3 quarters. It's about 30 and a quarter. The inlet of the compressor housing should be the same height if you measure it there because the outside of the compressor housing will change. The outer diameter of the inlet of the compressor housing should be able to match side to side because that's the same distance from the center point of the turbo or this, the shaft. So, so that's about 30 and 3 quarters. It should be the same height as the driver's side. That's pretty close. So now what I can start to do is mock up the passenger side. So I've got two pieces test fit in there and they do have little grooves in there so it holds the pieces in nice. So there shouldn't be a whole lot that needs to happen there. That's like a one and a half inch piece. And I just need to keep in mind the heater line routing. So I'll probably be able to come off of there with like 245s and come up through this area. If he even wants heat in the car, I'm not sure. I didn't ask him. It came in with heat, so I'll probably plan to keep it. Uh, I did ask him about the washer fluid reservoir for the downpipe here, and he said he was fine taking the washer fluid out and doesn't need me to relocate it because I asked him if he wanted me to try to relocate it to a different spot or build a different reservoir or something like that. So he said he's fine just getting rid of it, so we'll do that. So that's kind of what that's looking like now. I'll start to cut that other piece out and get it tacked in place. All right, so I made a real subtle change over to this side. I lifted that top pipe up a little bit and opened up that gap. So I'll probably end up having to shorten that bottom piece just to bring that one in to get it to match up to this. But there was a but the reason I did that was to try to get it to look a little bit more like it matched from side to side here from this angle. So this one is straight. This has a bend in it, but at least they kind of look like they come in around the same angle. Here it also kind of fills this void a little bit more, where if it was just coming straight down, it looks a little bit different. So like with this one pushed down a little bit where it was, now from this angle it kind of looks like they come in into different spots. The wastegate is also going to be right in here, so I'm not too worried about the lower bend, how that looks. But I do think going from this to there looks a little bit better. And they kind of look like they're coming in in the same spot. I don't know, maybe I'm just being a little bit too picky because this one's a straight pipe and then this one has a bend in it. So I think I'm just going to mock it up like that and do that little bit of a bigger gap there. But like I said, it's tricky trying to get asymmetrical turbos to look symmetrical as possible. And this one is a straight shot. That's a nice straight shot into the turbo. I don't really see a reason to add a bend just for the sake of adding a bend. This one has the bend because we're limited by how far we can rotate the turbo down here. And this manifold is actually physically one inch lower than the manifold on the other side. So on the trucks, 
The driver and passenger manifolds are slightly different. You can see that this one is bigger than this one here. You see it has a little bit of a different look to it. This one looks like it's nice and slim. The other one's a little more beefy. And that's just how the truck manifolds come. So this one is physically one inch higher up than the other side. And I'm going to shut up now. All right, so I did trim a little piece off of this 90. So I brought it back a little bit and then it should line up pretty well right with this piece. Now I'm just going to measure how much I need for that gap and then tack a couple pieces on and see how close we can get it. All right, pull my V-band out. I'm going to tack it up something like this. All right, so here's the piece coming off of the V-band. I did tack another section on. You can see I just marked it with two lines. Usually when I test fit it, I'll just mark it in two spots as kind of a reference point, and then I can take it on the bench and tack it in place. Or you could tack it in place on the car, but I didn't really want to move my welder back and forth. All right, so I got both the troubles hanging now. You can see I don't have the little bracket up top anymore holding them up. This side is just tacked into place. I think it turned out pretty well. You can see all the little tacks around there. I didn't fully weld it yet. But just wanted to test fit it. So I'll fully weld that, then we can start getting into wastegate positioning and building the intercooler piping. Here's this pipe with the turbo flange all welded up. This is for the passenger side. I think it turned out pretty pretty well. So I'm gonna bolt it on, bolt the turbos up, and see what it looks like. Alrighty, so there's kind of what they look like. And that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave it. So if you look at like the opening on the compressor, it's pretty much pretty much level. They're very close. You do have a little bit of discrepancy between uh, the the widening of the compressor housing here, but they're pretty pretty close to the same angle when they're down. So they're actually really close and I think there's a lot of other stuff in the engine bay that would distract from any little differences. This, for example, is kind of blocking the turbo when you look at it here and that's kind of what it looks like from the top. So pretty happy with how that turned out. Next video I'll be doing the wastegate placement and we should be able to get the wastegates nice and high up off the ground. So we shouldn't have to worry about bouncing them off anything anymore. And then also the turbo drains. So I'm debating if I want to go into the timing cover or the pan. The pan has a pretty small area in the front to get a bung welded onto. I'm also considering maybe coming off of the pan or the timing cover with like some aluminum tube. Similar to how I did these tubes here for the drain line. It's a nice thick tube and kind of gets the line out directed where I want to put a fitting. Still up in the air on how I want to do that, still brainstorming, but that's where the turbos are going to be. It should be pretty simple to just punch a hole in here and here, and then we'll do a nice simple bend down and then out the bumper. So that's why I got four 90s there, planning on doing one bend down and then one bend out. So I'm probably just going to pie cut the dump on the uh, wastegate dumps but those should be pretty short anyways. So we're actually making some pretty decent progress on this thing. I am also working on like a full how to build a turbo kit video off of building this setup here. So I'll stick around for that one. I'll probably upload that after I get all of this stuff done when I have all of the footage. But the idea behind that one is a reference for somebody that would be like brand new looking at potentially building a turbo kit or trying to understand how a turbo kit works. So that one should be pretty fun. But yeah, if you like the build guys, be sure to share it, leave a comment, let me know how you think, and we'll see you in the next one.